Hi, Tina. Wonder Woman! Our real responsibility was to our audience, to the people that had read the comic strip and knew what she could or couldn't do. The beautiful part about Wonder Woman and the TV show and the producer's approach was by drawing on the mythology of the comic books and staying really true to it. It was all very accurate to the comics. I mean, her coming to America and Paradise Island, all of it was what the comic books had set up. It resonated from the comic through TV land and to young viewers like myself, and it worked. And you made him tell the truth with the, um, with the lasso. That's right. It's not easy to figure out how to take the best of a cartoon strip and make it work in television. It's very, very hard to stay within the budget that television could afford and yet create for an audience what they remembered for the comic strip where it's very, very easy to draw a thousand men approach over the hill. Now it's easier, you can send out 10 and technically create the other 990, but then you couldn't quite do it that way. In the comic book, she got her powers from the Greek gods, and now she had incredible strength that could rival Superman, and she had speed that could rival the Flash. And I think you saw some of those powers reflected in the TV show. She became physically more powerful in seasons two and three. The differences in powers between the, the comics versions and the, the television version, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's strange, it's just one of those things because the various different eras and interpretations of the comics over the past 60 plus years, she's had different powers. Some of the tools may leave something to desire, maybe the special effects for the invisible plane weren't as great as they could be, but you know, for me as a kid, it was enough just to see these elements made in the series, like okay, there's the lasso and there's the plane, and you know, I didn't care otherwise, I just needed to see that, that stuff responded to. Oh yes, we just received your name. Well, I was sort of an afterthought. I can't believe that. Other than Christopher Reeve, there has never been a single actor who has so embodied a comic book character as Linda Carter did. She was the epitome of everything Wonder Woman was in the comics and everything that fans of Wonder Woman wanted the character to be. I found that grain of truth inside myself that I shared with that character. That part of me that would stand up for what I believed in and wanted to make things better, those qualities that I saw in myself or felt within myself that I gave to her. Linda Carter took that costume and she became that character. When Linda Carter walked on screen as Wonder Woman, you were like, I buy her instantly. I don't need an adjustment period this show doesn't have to convince me that she's Wonder Woman. In any acting role, once you're on a set and you're in costume, it helps you to get into your character. The tiara went on. I, I think that's when I started to feel transformed. Wonder Woman? Here, now? They moved the series to CBS and moved it suddenly from World War II up to the 1970s. It was not as big a leap as people think, at least for comic book fans, because in the comics, Wonder Woman had already gone to the, in the 1970s. She was having adventures in the 1970s. During the first season of the series, DC Comics moved the adventures of Wonder Woman back to World War II so that they matched the TV series. Once the series moved up to 1977, then they moved it back to 1977 adventures. So the comic actually reflected the reality of the TV series for a while. In the comics, when Wonder Woman wanted to change, when Diana Prince changed into Wonder Woman or vice versa, they originally, from the 1940s forward, would show her just taking off her clothes and she wore the Wonder Woman costume underneath. In the 1970s, they had her spin her lasso around herself and the magical vibrations from the lasso would replace her normal clothes with her Wonder Woman costume. Then, the TV show came out, they didn't want to do the spinning lasso, so they developed the Wonder Spin instead, 
And so for a while, the comic books reflected that. It's kind of cool to have created something that is so memorable about Wonder Woman that wasn't in the comic books. The second season of Wonder Woman introduced two additional costumes that Wonder Woman could spin around and turn into. One of them I like to call the Wonder Wetsuit, which was her blue bodysuit that she used when she dove into the water. In the comics, they didn't use a wetsuit. They also needed a Wonder Motorcycle outfit, and they wanted an all-body covering outfit that would cover up pads and things like that. They utilized the exact same outfit for her Wonder Wetsuit that they did for the motorcycle outfit. They just added a helmet and goggles, and suddenly she was Wonder Biker instead of Wonder Wetsuit. They actually developed some kind of super-powered characters for Wonder Woman to fight that didn't require huge amounts of special effects. They had Count Cagliostro, who was a master magician, evil master magician, of course. Hello, Diana. Hello, Wonder Woman. They had a toy maker who made an evil robot duplicate of Wonder Woman so that they could actually have Wonder Woman fighting herself, which was a pretty cool episode. So they would do what they could to kind of give her a television rogues gallery of villains, but they couldn't put people in flashy costumes and have them plotting to destroy the world. They had to more plot to destroy downtown Los Angeles or, you know, take over a health spa. Phil Jimenez is a very meticulous, detailed artist. And when he was drawing Wonder Woman, he came from a place of deep fandom. He wanted it to be the absolute best. So as he wrote and drew the character, it was really reminiscent of not only the best of the TV show, but the best of the comic books. Wonder Woman, the TV show, had a huge impact on the way I approach Wonder Woman because Linda Carter was Wonder Woman, is Wonder Woman. I, I think if you talk in any sort of comic circle, you'll find that we all agree she is the epitome of this character. She's the living physical embodiment of this character. What I took from her was a sense of grace and style and dignity, which you don't often see in most female characters. Most female characters in comics today are played sort of as sex vixens or sort of a little more kittenish or just as sort of men and, you know, and, and female in women's clothing. And what was great about Linda was that she brought to this character this incredible femininity, sense of style and grace and a regality which I still use whenever I draw Wonder Woman. I just think about the way Linda Carter stands in that costume, and that's how I approach the character. Adam Hughes has been doing Wonder Woman covers for ages now, and he imbues his covers not only with an incredibly sexy Wonder Woman, he also tends to put in a little bit of humor. One of the things I loved about Linda Carter's portrayal of Wonder Woman is that she wasn't just a macho male character written with with a, with a woman in mind. She actually had this great sort of gentle quality to her. She didn't seem like she wanted to go out and kick butt. She wanted to go out and sort of spread her anthem of, uh, of peace and everybody can get along okay and don't step on women because women are just as good as anybody else. But then when push came to shove, she could push and shove harder than any of the men. One of the things I was lucky to do was my last issue of Wonder Woman, I wanted to do an homage to Linda Carter specifically because she was such an important figure in my life, sort of creatively, and she was such an inspiration in, a, in her role as Wonder Woman. And so I drew an issue and got permission from DC Comics Legal to make sure that I could use all these various costumes. So I drew a DC Comics version of Wonder Woman as Linda Carter. And it was a one-time only deal, but I was very happy because it was very, very popular. And I was eventually able to give her a copy of that comic, sort of to show her that um, her embodiment of that icon has lasted with me since I was seven years old. When I've had to draw Wonder Woman, I'm somewhat remiss for the fact that I can't just illustrate Linda Carter because here I could make my drawings look just like this woman, but I don't have the right to just wipe her likeness in my illustrations. As far as memory of the TV show itself, some of the details of that might be lost to time, but the depiction of Wonder Woman is clearly the most impactful of her entire history. It is impossible to forget what Linda Carter was to that character. I think she came back to help you. Us. Well, let's hope she comes around again. I think you can count on it. I think one of the most memorable shows, and the show that I get a particularly warm feeling about, is Wonder Woman, because when it was right, it was wonderfully right. And we managed to create the world of the cartoon and yet make it a very successful show. 
it was that, that great thrill of actually seeing, you know, your favorite, your favorite comic book character, something you've read in a book, and all of a sudden it's running around on your TV on Friday nights. When there's someone that helps you to believe in yourself, and that's the greatest gift that Wonder Woman has given, is that you can believe in yourself. And I think she's alive and well. I think that she lives in us all, and um, she will never die. Wonder Woman has lasted now for over 65 years for a reason. Part of it's she's just an iconic pop culture character, but the other part I believe is because the underpinnings of her character, the reason she was created, the message she sends. To say that we can live in a world with love and peace, show women that they didn't have to be weak, they didn't have to be passive, and that it was okay to fight for what you believed in. The only time I have taken the costume, I've taken it out twice. And uh, both times were for my child's kindergarten show and tell. I was a hit. I was definitely a cool mom that day.